So the Clippers are red hot right now, and I think I can speak for both of us and say, this is a team we always believed in. Ever since the Harden trade, we were like, the Clippers, this is gonna work perfect. Oh, we've always loved the Clippers, and just don't bother checking the videos that were uploaded to this channel on November 3rd or November 17th. Just don't bother, don't fact check those. We have always loved the Clippers. Before we start talking about Harden and the Clippers, if you haven't already, make sure you leave this video a like, give us a subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you never miss out on one of our videos. So the Clippers, yes, they just beat the Thunder to move to 26 and 14 on the season. That's good enough for the fourth seed in the West. They're only two and a half games out of the first seed. Also, I found it hilarious that news broke during the middle of the second quarter that James Harden apparently wants a long-term deal to end his career with the Clippers. I think it was Chris Haynes who broke the news, and I was like, he's on the court right now. Where did you get this? I don't know, but credit to the Clippers front office. They got that Kawhi deal, apparently Harden, Paul George coming soon, and the new arena. Like, things are looking pretty good for that franchise. And we got to address the elephant in the room. We made a couple of videos early in this year uh, claiming that the James Harden trade would not save the Clippers. And at the time of the first video, Harden had just quit his way off his third straight team. And at the time of the second video, the Clippers were 0-6 with Harden. He wasn't playing particularly well. The lineup of Kawhi, PG, Harden, and Russ was unsurprisingly not working. And we've done pretty well. Well, during our time on YouTube of hating on the Clippers, it's kind of become a tradition. So we were fully prepared to do it some more. But on this day, just can't do it. I can't do it. Yeah, then the two people that deserve a ton of props are obviously Russ for coming off the bench, you know, being willing to do that in the past. Maybe he wouldn't have been willing to, but credit to Russ for that. And then Ty Lue for figuring it out. He took him like, you know, whatever, six to eight games, but he saw the adjustments and he made them. And I think Ty Lue, one of the best coaches in the league, if anyone was going to make it work, it was going to be him. And they have soared since moving Russ to the bench. Had a nine game winning streak in December, 23 and seven since then. That's the best record in the NBA over that time period. They were 11th in offensive rating before making the change. They've been third since they made the change. And look, moving Russ to the bench, you know, that obviously helped. But the sleeper move here... Daniel Tice. You know, he's just a veteran, can play defense. He's tough in there. Coming off that FIBA World Cup win with Germany. Great move for them. Yeah, bring in Daniel Tice. You go 23 and seven over 30 games. It's just how it works. It's I what get, he does. Yeah, more teams should have hopped on that. I guess it's just as simple as that. For real though, moving Russ to the bench has been a godsend for this team. Not because he was playing poorly, but it lets Harden operate as the primary ball handler. And that's the role it kind of seems like he wants at this point in his career. It's really weird considering the guy used to be legitimately the best scorer in the NBA. And now he kind of wants to be like a Steve Nash type. Yeah, it is weird, but he was always a great point guard. And Terrence Mann, yeah, obviously a way better fit in the starting lineup over Russ. But what have we said for like four years with this Clippers team? Obviously injuries, but they needed a damn point guard. Yep. And James Harden out there has opened things up for Paul George and Kawhi so much. They're playing some of the best basketball they've played for the Clippers so far. And also you mentioned like with the Terrence Mann thing, like, he doesn't have a usage rate of 20%. That helps. Like, he doesn't need the ball. He can get his points here and there. He can play defense. Like, it's just, it's a better fit. And like you said, with Harden running the point, I mean, Paul George has had a great year the entire year. And Kawhi, lest we forget, had a pretty bad start to the season. He's been doing awesome since. And also, I do want to point out, it's interesting to note that neither Kawhi or PG have really load managed much this season. And yet, neither has really suffered an injury. Load management literally does not work. It doesn't. It doesn't prevent injuries. It doesn't help you get to the playoffs or anything it just flat out doesn't work i could have seen an argument for it working back when teams had like 15 back-to-backs a year right now when they have like three like if you load manage a game you might be off for like five days right and your body goes cold in that time like playing the game a lot like keeps you in a rhythm keeps you warm like if you take that much time off i always feel like you're more liable to get injured and Ty Lu, i remember he had that conversation he was like i talked to pg i talked to Kawhi. we gotta take the regular season serious this year and credit to them, they actually have for once. And I don't want to downplay Russ's impact on this team either, because honestly, he's been really solid off the bench. Again, major props to the man who is a former all-star, former MVP, you know, having the humility and the grace to be like, you know what, I'll come off the bench for the betterment of the team. And his numbers are down, but that's because he's playing 10 minutes less per game. But he's still giving you 10 points, five and a half boards, four and a half assists. He gets to be the primary ball handler for the second unit instead of trying to jam around. <laughs> 
a round peg into a square hole trying to fit him in the starting unit. Yeah, and also they swapped out Roko and Nick, who are still fine players. Former Blazers love him dearly. Yeah, Nick's actually been playing pretty well for the 76ers, so credit to him, but I think it helps that they finally have at least a couple young players. They got Amir Coffee in there. He's been playing some solid defense, so a little bit more youth maybe than years past. Of course, this is a Clippers video, so we can't be entirely positive about them, and you know, there's still some concerns with this team. Obviously, injuries. This is an old team. Kawhi, Paul George, Russ, Harden, all of them are over 32 years old. All of them have struggled a lot with injuries. I mean, Kawhi hasn't played a full playoff since 2020. PG hasn't played a full playoff since 21. And Harden, of course, has the ever-present hamstring injury from hell. So you got to worry about one of them picking up an injury at some point. Honestly, until Kawhi plays a full playoffs, like, I'm not, I'm still going to doubt it. I still think he's going to get injured. I hate to say it. I don't want to see it happen, but I just feel like they're going to be rolling. We're going to get to the playoffs and then Kawhi somehow tears meniscus or something. It I, happens every year. I mean, the last year Kawhi played a full playoff series, we were still in college. <laughs> exactly. It's been four years. And it sucks even more. It's not like when he is playing, he's like, whatever. He played those two games against the Suns last year, bowled the hell out, and then was just done. They probably beat the Suns if he plays. Yeah, I think they might have. Even without Paul George. Also, we got to mention the front court depth. It's not terrible, but look at the teams they're going to have to beat. The Timberwolves, the Nuggets, maybe even the Lakers. I don't know if their front court depth is going to get it done. Yeah, I mean, they've already lost twice to the Lakers. I mean, both games were close and they didn't have Harden for the first game. But still, I think AD had 20 and 10 in both games, shot over 50% in both games. Interestingly enough, they've actually played Jokic better than probably anybody. In the two games Jokic has played against the Clippers this year, he's only shooting 31%. He had that one game where he shot 9 to 32 and still got a triple double somehow. <laughs> but I mean, over a seven game series, I don't expect Tice, Plumlee, and Zubak to be able to contain Jokic. And if you look at their depth right now, they just got Mason Plumlee back from an injury. But now Zubac is injured and he's out for at least four weeks. Yeah, at least these guys are veterans. So they're not like young guys you're trusting on. They played in the playoffs before. So it's not like a huge concern, but you know, against Jokic, they might get torched. Then again, that's kind of a concern for everybody. Yeah. Yeah, we say that about literally every team, so what can you really do? And finally, James Harden in the playoffs. Look, I'll believe it when I see it. <laughs> exactly. Until it happens, I'm not going to buy into the regular season hype. We've seen it for years. He plays well the regular season, and then he comes in and lays a bunch of eggs in the playoffs. If he does it, I'll give him all the props in the world, but until he does it, I'm not going to buy into it. Here's the thing. This year, he might not need to ball the hell out. Like with Embiid, Embiid was injured last year. He kind of had to play some hero ball a couple games games. As long as Paul George and Kawhi stay healthy in there, he's like the third option. He might not need to ball out. He could just put up like 20 and 10 a night and they'll still get victories. But if one gets injured, they might be screwed. But hey, the Clippers are playing real well right now. And you know what? If they keep it up, maybe we'll make a full apology video for them in a couple months. And again, if they crash and burn, you can bet we'll be right back here hating on them again. Yeah, and I feel like that might happen. So we'll, we'll just see. We'll see what happens. That's the video, guys. How far do you think the Clippers can go this year? I'd love to hear what you had to say in the comments down below. If you enjoyed the video, consider leaving it a like, as it really does help us out. And while you're here, why not check out some of our other videos as well? And don't forget to subscribe to Synthetic Sports.